In this video, I'm going to talk about uniform circular motion in a magnetic field. And this magnetic field is actually going to be very special because it is uniform and it always points out of the whiteboard. So in this little diagram I've drawn over here, uh, this little black notation here is telling us that we have a magnetic field vector, that's the B, B field, and then we have this little sign here. And that sign uh, indicates that the magnetic field is coming out of the whiteboard. So when you see that little circle there, it's coming out of the whiteboard. So if you imagine this pen is the magnetic field vector, it's sitting normal to the surface of the whiteboard. And then what we have is we have a velocity vector. So we have a velocity associated with a little charge Q. And this charge Q is moving uh, as dictated by the velocity vector. And that velocity vector is in the surface of the whiteboard. And because it's in the surface of the whiteboard, it has to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. So V and B are perpendicular in this scenario. And that's actually very important because V and B are going to be taken uh, together in a cross product in this equation down here. Now this equation you may recognize is a simplification of the Lorentz force. So normally the Lorentz force also has another term over here that is the electric field's contribution. But in this scenario, there is no electric field. The electric field is zero. If there was an electric field, let's say there was an electric field in the plane, in the same plane as the velocity vector, you wouldn't have a circular trajectory. Instead, you would have a loopy kind of circle that's moving around, right? So that's a little more complicated. What we're dealing with over here is uniform circular motion. So this force is actually going to be constant because the B field is uniform and this velocity uh, or its magnitude is also constant. Uh, the velocity vector is not constant because it's changing its direction as the particle moves around in the circle. So a circular trajectory is formed when you have the velocity of the particle being perpendicular to the uniform magnetic field. Why is that the case? Well, let's have a look at this equation down here. What we're doing is we're multiplying the charge Q by the cross product of the velocity and the magnetic field. The velocity and the mag magnetic field, when you take the cross product, the result has to be perpendicular to both of these vectors. What does it mean to be perpendicular to both of these vectors? Well, the only direction that it could be is either down or up. It has to be in the plane over here. Why? It has to be perpendicular to velocity. And if you're perpendicular to this velocity, you have to either point downwards like this or upwards like that. And as you move al along the circle, you have to either point outwards away from the, from the circle or inwards. And why is it inwards, right? So we have two choices for it to be perpendicular. Why is it inwards rather than outwards? It's inwards because this is positive. This is a positive sign. And for it to be positive, it has to point this way because of the conventions of the right hand rule. So if you take your right hand, what you can do is you can set this vector over here to be the velocity. Your index finger can be the velocity. Then your middle finger can be the magnetic field. Finally, your thumb can be the force. And now if you put your uh, right hand in the plane of the whiteboard, what you'll see is the B field is sticking out, the velocity is going along, it's tangential to the circle, and the force is always pointing inwards. It's inwards. So that's why it can't be outwards, because the convention is telling us it has to be inwards. That's how we've defined V cross B. So that is by convention. And also, it wouldn't be reasonable for the force to, to point outwards. That would give us a crazy result. So if you change the sign of this Q, of this charge Q, if it changes to negative, what will happen? Well, you'll still get circular motion, but it will just be in the opposite direction. But because this sign uh, convention is positive, it's going ar around in this direction. You'll also get a flip in the direction of rotation if you change this B field from pointing out of the board to into the board. Now, we've made some assumptions. We've said this B field is perpendicular to V. That means the force also has to be perpendicular to both of these guys. So these guys are mutually perpendicular, and all of these guys are actually mutually orthogonal. They're mutually perpendicular. Everyone is 90 degrees away from the other guy. So that allows us to use a property of the cross product. If all of these vectors are 90 degrees 
uh, away from each other, or if all of these guys are mutually perpendicular, that means that you can just take the magnitudes of all of these guys and you'll get the magnitude of this guy. So that means the magnitude of the force due to the magnetic field is equal to Q V B. So this is a nice little simplification that only works because all of these guys are mutually perpendicular. But wait just a second, we can actually see that this guy is acting exactly like a centripetal force. So if this guy is also a magnetic force and a centripetal force, we can write another expression. Let's write F sub C for centripetal force. So the centripetal force is going to be whatever the mass of the particle is, m, times the velocity squared of that particle divided by the radial distance uh, away from the center, which is the dimensions of the circle. So we have mv squared on r. So this is the centripetal force for uniform circular motion, and this is the magnetic force. Another thing I'll specify is this little charge q also has the property of mass. This little red dot has got q as its charge and m as its mass. So m is the mass of this little charge and, char and q is the charge of the charge. This is a point particle in our model. Now what we can do is we can identify that the magnetic force is exactly the same as the centripetal force. So we can set this equal to this. So we'll go f sub b is equal to f sub c. Now what does that mean? That means that q v b, which is the magnetic force, is equal to m v squared over r. So this is just the centripetal force and this is just the magnetic force. And you can see that there's a v on both of these sides, so we can cancel that. And if we cancel that v, what do we get? Well, what we actually get is Q times B is equal to MV on R. There we go, MV on R. And another little manipulation I want to do is I want to take that V to the left-hand side, and I'll multiply this side by R, and I'll divide by M. So I'll get V equals to Q V R over M. This is Q B R over M. So Q B, that's always together. Uh, M is always downstairs, and R comes upstairs when we uh, do this little manipulation. So what do we have? We have an expression for the velocity. The magnitude of the velocity is this product over here. So the velocity is actually lower if you have more mass. And that makes intuitive sense. If, if it's a heavier particle, then it's going to have a lower velocity if all other values are held constant. And if the charge is larger, then the velocity will be higher, because charge is what determines how strongly you interact with electric and magnetic fields. The radius is also proportional to the velocity. So if, you're going, uh, if your radius is really, really large, then you're also going to have a big velocity. So this is assuming all other values are held constant. Now, this over here is the velocity. What I also want to show you is the kinetic energy of that particle. What can we say about the kinetic energy? Well, we know that the kinetic energy, I'll just write Ke for kinetic energy, in general, the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Now, that in this scenario is equal to 1 half m, and then in brackets, we can put this expression for velocity. So our expression for velocity is Q b r over m. And what is that equal to? Oh, I need to put a square. What is this equal to? Well, we're going to have a q squared, a b squared, and an r squared, and downstairs in the denominator, we're going to have an m squared. But we also have a factor of m over here, so that m is going to cancel with one of the factors of m downstairs. So what we're going to end up with is the kinetic energy is equal to so we'll have q squared, b squared, r squared, all over 2m. So this is the kinetic energy of that particle 
in terms of these relevant quantities. So in terms of the charge, the mass, the magnetic field strength, and also the size of the circle. So you can see that the size of the circle, uh, or the size of the circular trajectory, uh, determines the kinetic energy and the velocity. So if the velocity is determined, then the kinetic energy is also determined. Why is this useful? Why would this kind of system be useful? Well, it turns out in particle accelerators, this is one of the mechanisms of trapping particles and keeping them in, in one place. One notable type of particle accelerator is a cyclotron. And the cyclotron actually uses this mechanism, this perpendicular magnetic field, to trap particles in a circular trajectory. And actually, it's made of two D shapes, so two halves. And the inside has a little place where they can accelerate the particles. So they keep accelerating the particles and adjusting the magnetic field strength to keep the particles trapped. And eventually, they can release those particles at really high kinetic energies. So cyclotrons are a particle accelerator, which is an application of this kind of theory. So what do we do in this video? Here's a quick summary. We were talking about uniform circular motion in a magnetic field. Right? That's what this video is about. And we took the special scenario of a circular trajectory caused by a magnetic field. And this circular trajectory is for a little charge. It's a point particle with charge Q and mass M. Then what we did is we used some of the properties of cross products, and we found that the magnetic force, or the magnitude of the magnetic force, is QVB. That's the product of the charge, the velocity, and the magnetic field strength. We also found that that force is equivalent to the centripetal force. And the centripetal force is mass times the velocity squared divided by r, where r is the radius of that circular trajectory. Then what we did is we set these two forces equal to each other. We set the magnetic force and the centripetal force equal to each other, and we made some algebraic manipulations, and we solved for the velocity. After we found the velocity, we substituted the velocity into the kinetic energy, and we found an expression for the kinetic energy with all of these relevant quantities. So now we understand what the velocity and the kinetic energy are of this particle as it moves around in a uniform circular motion. So this can be used in applications for particle accelerators, most notably the cyclotron.